So when you're in that high cortisol state, as it's often referred to, your digestion sucks, your immune function sucks, and you're very likely to get... I want to talk about the biochemistry of overtraining. I think it's extremely important for athletes, fitness enthusiasts to understand what is going on in the body, particularly with how the fight or flight response can give you some adaptations uh, for a short duration of time when you're overdoing it and burning the candle at both ends, your body will respond with the production of stress hormones that get you through those long-term family crises at the hospital vigil where you're going for three or four or five weeks without enough sleep, without enough food. <laughs> you're in a crisis breaking up with your mean boyfriend or girlfriend and you know, you're dysregulated, you're not hungry, but you still wake up at 6 a.m. wide awake every day and you can't go to sleep until after midnight because of the stress response. But on all these examples, and especially when it comes to you're training great, you're upping your weekly mileage in preparation for the marathon or the big triathlon coming up, what happens is you are borrowing time, liquidating your assets as Dr. Tommy Wood describes, and paying the price later because the body's stress response, the fight or flight mechanisms are extremely delicate and designed for emergency use only. This is one of our most prominent evolutionary adaptations. When we face a life or death threat, the fight or flight response kicks in instantly and um, we, we start to uh, uh, release these adaptive hormones into the bloodstream, most notably cortisol. Um, you call it, you, you've heard it called adrenaline. Um, you've heard it called uh, all kinds of things where we're just amped up and we experience all these different um, immediate physiological changes, elevated heart rate, elevated body temperature, elevated respiration, heightened cognitive function. Remember, the fight or flight response kicks in under all forms of stimulation that are perceived to be uh, uh, fight or flight, perceived to be typically in our primitive brain. They're perceived as life or death, but sometimes today, life or death could be an argument with the mean girlfriend. It could be your turn to do the presentation in the conference room, or of course, your turn to get into the blocks and compete in the master's 100-meter race <laughs> for the first time, having a whole lifetime of being an endurance athlete. Oh boy, I can't wait for that day, but I'm definitely going to be into heightened fight or flight. So, Let's talk about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. This is a complex feedback loop responsible for the body's reaction to outside stimuli from the environment. Under normal circumstances, the hypothalamus, which you probably know is the control tower for all manner of endocrine and metabolic function in the body, the hypothalamus interprets these stimulatory signals from the environment. Remember I mentioned uh, argument with girlfriend, getting into the blocks for 100 meters, making a presentation in the conference room. Uh, so the interpretation is there, and then the pituitary gland is directed to make important neurotransmitters like epinephrine, norepinephrine, uh, the, uh, the adrenaline cocktail, as well as cortisol, and then uh, the adrenal glands release these hormones into the bloodstream, right? The pituitary gland makes the hormones, the adrenal gland releases the hormones, and you experience appropriate elevated physical and cognitive function in response to the environmental, I could say stressor, but I'm going to say stimulation because we use the term stress in a negative context, but stress can be either negative or positive. So if you uh, look on the internet, you can Google those uh, charts of the most stressful experiences in one's life. And it's like uh, a death of a partner or family member, number one. Number two is wedding day. And hopefully uh, that's not because uh, you're going through with it, even though you think you're making a mistake. Uh, the reason it's up there is because it's such a high stimulatory event to be the bride or the groom or what have you, that it's right up there on the list with the uh, a tragic occurrences that are, of course, highly stressful in a negative context. So when that uh, stressor is experienced, the HPA, the axis kicks into gear, 
And all these processes occur where you're getting uh, the, the elevation of cognitive and physical function. When you're in this state, and I'm talking about the extreme examples of, you know, running for our lives from the predator. And so your heart rate is banging out of your chest and you're sweating and you're shaky. Uh, that's the extreme immediate fight or flight stimulation. But we also have uh, a modern condition of chronic fight or flight overstimulation, where we're just getting a drip, a constant drip of these stress hormones in the bloodstream in an inappropriate manner that serves to uh, lead us to eventual demise because we are abusing this very delicate fight or flight response. And that's the, the essence, uh, the, the battle of modern life is to uh, deliver appropriate brief fight or flight stressors to become more resilient and stronger against all forms of stress uh, and try to mitigate the chronic uh, overproduction of fight or flight hormones due to uh, you know unending types of stimulation in hectic high stress modern life. Um, because what happens when you uh, over stress yourself stress yourself in a chronic manner, the HPA axis becomes dysregulated. This means that instead of even a appropriate, mild fight or flight stimulation, you respond poorly to all manner of life engagement. You are not even releasing normal levels of cortisol and other important hormones, uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, all all the, uh, the the cocktail of hormones that give us cognitive function, alertness, and and physical function, uh, because you're in a state of uh, what we uh, often refer to as burnout. Getting up in the morning becomes a burden because the natural spike in cortisol that helps you get moving has become compromised. Routine metabolic, hormonal, cognitive, and immune functions are compromised eventually very likely triggering serious health issues. Remember, when you are in fight or flight, all other uh, metabolic and hormonal and immune functions are set aside so that you can run away from the tiger or stand vigil at the hospital for seven weeks or uh, run 73 miles in a week as you prepare for the marathon. So your digestive system, is typically one of the first things to go. I found that with uh, many endurance athletes that I train with where you'd get stomach problems when your uh, training was a little bit too stressful because we don't need to be digesting food appropriately when we're in a battle for life or death, right? So digestion goes down as well as immune system gets suppressed uh, due to the lack of importance in comparison to the immediate fight or flight stimulation. So when you're in that high cortisol state, as it's often referred to, your digestion sucks, your immune function sucks, and you're very likely to get uh, anything from a minor cold or a minor digestive issue to stuff that becomes a lot more serious when chronic fight or flight overstimulation becomes a pattern in your life. Uh, you've heard of leaky gut and related symptoms are in many cases can be traced back to overly stressful lifestyle patterns, compromising gut health, especially when you throw uh, nasty food down the gut too, while it's being um, uh, uh, working suboptimally due to chronic fight or flight overstimulation. Um, and you can uh, learn all about people that have really uh, trashed their systems with these common illnesses such as uh, thyroid dysfunction, uh, adrenal burnout, uh, Epstein-Barr, fibromyalgia, uh, an assortment of autoimmune conditions that are traced to chronic uh, fight or flight stimulation, uh, you know, suppression of normal um, immune function such that you experience autoimmunity and uh, terrible things like that that, you know, lead to uh, really disastrous chronic illnesses. But I also want to close by mentioning that in many cases, including my own personal experience, this uh, chronic fight or flight overstimulation leading to burnout can manifest with no, no illness whatsoever. So this happened to me uh, on two distinct periods during my nine year triathlon career where I just got completely fried from all the global travel and the competition and was exhausted for a period lasting around six weeks. I could not get up off the couch without feeling fatigued and just the thought of walking down, it was a pretty long driveway, but the thought of walking down my driveway to the mailbox 
uh, was just daunting. And if I did it, I'd have to come back and rest on the couch. So my body was destroyed. I was in and out of a variety of uh, doctor's offices and getting a whole bunch of expensive medical tests, blood tests, trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with this guy who was a world-ranked racer on the circuit uh, a, a month or two before, and now I couldn't get off the couch. And no one ever found anything clinically wrong with me. So the overtraining burnout condition can be subclinical such that you can go into the blood lab and deliver positive results and have the doctor come back and say, wow, you're a really healthy fit specimen, but wait, doc, why can't I get off the couch and jog two miles when previously I was running 50 miles a week, biking 300 and swimming uh, another 10? Uh, so that's a problem with uh, modern life is your stress hormone system will carry you as far as it can go and fight valiantly to allow you to continue to absorb the chronic stress of those high weekly mileage or that travel and that competitive schedule that I referenced. It'll try, 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 and then it'll, in many cases, make it feel like you've just fallen off a cliff because when that HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis becomes exhausted, you are in big trouble. And if that little gentle... Uh, a, a circadian influenced cortisol spike does not happen in the morning. Let me tell you, it's a difficult task just to get your butt up and get out of bed and walk down to the coffee pot or whatever, uh, something that you're going to uh, further um, exhaust and overstimulate the uh, fight or flight responses in the body. So the idea here is to be aware of how the uh, how the, uh, the the endocrine system works. And in further uh, shows, I'm going to give you some specific and precise symptoms to pay attention to so that when you tiptoe into the world of chronic fight or flight overstimulation, you can take immediate corrective action.